Welcome to the Public Gardens GIS training series. I'm Brian Morgan. In this seven part series, we're going to walk you through the process of creating a GIS for your garden using the ArcGIS Public Gardens data model. In this opening lesson, we will introduce you to some of the resources of the Alliance for Public Gardens GIS, and we'll show you a bit about GIS data models. Let's get started. So this is lesson one, uh, introduction to the Alliance for Public Gardens GIS and the ArcGIS Public Garden data model. Start off first about with talking a little bit about the Alliance for Public Gardens GIS. Um, we're sort of a nonprofit organization, not in a formal way, but a really informal way, and uh, we're essentially a group of collection managers and GIS users that are working together to make it a lot easier for people to get started using GIS uh, at uh, gardens and zoos. And one of our main missions is to really promote the use of GIS for uh, managing living collections and for plant conservation. So uh, what we've been working on is providing resources for getting started with GIS uh, or using one more effectively. And uh, at the right here, there's an image of our website screen, which can be found at apgg.org, and uh, some of the different resources we have available for connecting with us. So right now, as I mentioned, we have the website at apgg.org, um, and that website's currently under development, and there's not a ton of information on there right now, but there are there is uh, some essential information that will help you get going. One of the, the best resources we have right now is a Google group, uh, which is kind of like a forum um, for community support and discussions. And if you go to apgg.org, uh, there's a link for uh, join the APGG, and that will get you on uh, to our Google group. And the Google group, you can use it to ask questions uh, of other members. I think there's somewhere around 80 members right now. And uh, you can go through and look through past conversations and uh, see what people have been talking about and see if they've come across similar problems uh, in their uh, efforts to use GIS at their garden. Uh, we recently created an RSS feed for uh, news from the group. Um, and if you go to the news section of the APGG website, you can uh, click on the RSS feed button and then that'll uh, subscribe you to it. And essentially, you can get uh, RSS uh, news updates in your uh, email box or your RSS reader. We're trying out a couple different social media uh, outlets for uh, getting information. One of them is a LinkedIn group. Uh, LinkedIn is kind of like Facebook for professionals and uh, that's going to have uh, some of the same kind of content uh, as the RSS feed. It'll have that news will come through that way. Uh, you can also do discussions on there and uh, additionally it has the, uh, the capacity to do job postings which hopefully we can use sometime in the future. And uh, another one of our new things is this YouTube channel for GIS training videos and uh, all of these videos uh, if you didn't access them through our YouTube channel, uh, you'll be able to access them there. And we're also going to have additional videos that aren't produced by us on uh, GIS concepts and uh, tasks uh, that will relate to gardens. So one of the first things that may be of interest to you uh, that we've been working on is a grant program between uh, the American Public Garden Association and uh, ESRI or ESRI. And this grant program allows for any institutional member of the uh, of APGA to apply for a grant through the Esri Conservation Program that will allow them to get uh, free ArcGIS, ArcPad, and extensions. Uh, basically, any software that Esri makes, uh, you can apply for for this grant, and Esri will provide it for you uh, for free. Uh, it will also uh, provide you with online training, uh, live training, and books. So uh, online training, you'll be able to take any time you want, and Esri offers quite a few different courses through their virtual, virtual campus. The live training is done on a uh, kind of standby basis. So if there's room in a class and uh, it gets close enough to the time when they're offering it, they will uh, allow you to take that course. 
And also Esri has a uh, large publication division called Esri Press, and they have tons of different books uh, on GIS training and different subjects that you can apply for as well. And the grant is designed to be a three-year software maintenance and support grant. So essentially, they will give you the software for three years with uh, support. And after that, you can go through and apply for the grant again uh, to continue on with it. Uh, another big benefit of this grant program is free registration to their annual user conference. So Esri has uh, the Inter International User Conference in San Diego every year, and it's approximately 15,000 people. Uh, and it's just an amazing resource for learning about GIS. There's all kinds of technical wor workshops and, um, and paper sessions offered by other GIS users. And it's a really an amazing resource uh, and quite pricey. And this grant will provide that registration to you for free. So if you want more information about the grant, we have a little bit on the APGG website. Uh, but essentially right now the process is to send a blank email to APGA at ESRI.com and they'll send you back uh, an application uh, for you to fill out and instructions on how to do it. So the latest thing that we've been working on uh, with the Alliance for Public Gardens GIS is this GIS training program uh, for museum professionals and this video series is part of that training program. So uh, we have a grant at the UC Davis Arboretum to develop these training resources and uh, what we're trying to do is develop the, the APGG website, put more content on there that's going to be really useful for people getting started with GIS. Um, we're going to work more on this social networking idea, uh, the things like the LinkedIn site and the YouTube site um, and some other things we're looking at uh, to basically offer better resources for uh, for other GIS users and gardens to connect with each other and kind of create a support network for uh, getting uh, getting help. Uh, we're working on what we're calling the making the case for GIS materials, and these materials are essentially things that you can take to uh, you know the director of your garden or a friend's board uh, to basically show them how GIS can be used in the garden and how you can achieve a return on investment with it. Another thing we're working on is what we're calling the Guide to GIS book, and this book will be a multi-chapter uh, book that will essentially walk you through the process of getting started with GIS at your garden, all the way from uh, making decisions about uh, you know how to start it and plan it, uh, through actually uh, setting up the GIS for the first time to collecting data, and these training videos are meant to be a uh, a supplement to that book. And uh, we've been working on creating a model volunteer program that will essentially kind of provide you with the resources you need to start a volunteer program at your garden for doing GIS work. So how to recruit volunteers, how to train them, um, how to retain them, and uh, how to get them to, to really uh, produce what you need to keep your GIS going. And kind of complementary to that is this professional services program we're working on developing. And the idea with that is that we're going to basically try to hook gardens up with GIS professionals. They may not have necessarily garden experience, but they know how to do GIS really well. And uh, we often hear about uh, kind of GIS professionals, especially in a bad economy, that are looking for uh, somewhere to volunteer, um, and gardens are one of those things that they'd be interested in working uh, with. And this program is essentially going to help you guys get connected uh, with these GIS professionals and uh, get some, you know, hands-on help for getting started. And of course, another part of the uh, training program are these training videos, as I mentioned. And the, the last thing we're looking at doing is uh, is in October uh, of 2010, which uh, you may be watching this video after that date, is we're hoping to have a training workshop um, at the Center for Public Horticulture in Delaware. And that training workshop will essentially be an uh, all-day workshop that will walk you through the process of uh, creating a GIS and introduce you to all the topics. And a lot of this stuff will be, uh, you know, repeated in these videos. But uh, if you're watching this video after that date, uh, I encourage you to, to look at our YouTube channel and find uh, the video of that workshop to, to get a little bit more uh, hands-on experience doing this stuff. So one of the main things that we've been working on at the Alliance for Public Gardens GIS is the GIS data model, which I'll talk a bit more about in detail in future slides. Um, but first I want to introduce you to the concept that 
kind of got us started going down the path of creating this data model, and that, that's the concept of enterprise GIS. And what enterprise GIS uh, means is really using your GIS system to manage all sorts of different aspects of the operations of uh, your organization. So uh, it's really common to use GIS for asset management, uh, managing your, you know, your buildings, your benches, your uh, commemorative signs, things like that. But it also, uh, once you have all that information in your GIS and you know where your roads are, you know where your buildings are, you know where your visitors are, you can start using it to, to create emergency response plans. Uh, you can use it to uh, you know, manage projects as far as where new uh, projects may be going in and uh, where maybe the best spots for those are and the information that they need. Uh, you can use it to create visitor maps, kind of the customer service idea, and create things that will make your customer's experience a little bit better. Uh, you can use it for engineering, for, uh, you know, basically creating plans and uh, construction drawings for new projects because everything in your GIS should be accurate. Uh, you can use it for mobile uh, applications, so providing information to your staff um, while they're out in the field, being the ability to do work orders and things like that from a mobile device. You can use it for things like code compliance, uh, for logistics, for routing people through, um, through your, your garden. As I mentioned, work orders, uh, selecting sites for new projects, uh, and just kind of day-to-day operations uh, of your garden. And if your garden is big enough, maybe you have traffic places like uh, the San Diego Zoo are using GIS for uh, traffic management. So this concept of enterprise GIS using uh, GIS for everything really becomes uh, an important concept to the, the data model. So one of the, uh, the main questions that people always ask us when we talk about the data model project is, what exactly is a data model? And uh, the quote there on the screen is the kind of official uh, you know, definition of the data model, but really what it is is it's essentially a database schema. So GIS is just like a uh, standard database that you may have in you know, Microsoft Access or FileMaker or something like that, but it just adds the uh, geometry component to it. So it's essentially a database that um, all the, the rows in the database are uh, assigned to polygons or lines or points uh, on the map. So currently there are about 30 different uh, industry data models for ArcGIS and those range from things like uh, the petroleum industry has one for doing oil exploration and delivery, uh, the you know, forestry people have one for managing their forests, uh, uh, but biodiversity conservation kind of folks have one for doing uh, conservation uh, work. So there's all kinds of different data models out there, and we're developing the, uh, the public garden data model as uh, the next one in line. But essentially, really what data models are are a template uh, for starting a GIS project. So they're meant to be a starting point of sorts where you can download the data model and customize it as you see fit to make it um, fit your organization, but you don't have to go through the process of thinking about all of the different features and the things you need to know about those features uh, that are going to need to go into that data model. So the goal of our project was to create a free and open source template uh, for starting the GIS project at your garden. And by free, obviously we mean you're not going to pay uh, any money for it. And open source, meaning that you can change it any way that you see fit uh, by adding or subtracting to it uh, to make it fit your garden. And we wanted to make the, uh, the data model what we're calling light, medium, and extra strength. So uh, we developed it at the extra, extra strength level so that uh, a giant garden such as you know, Missouri Botanic Garden or the San Diego Wild Animal Park uh, could download that model and it would fit their needs, but we also knew that uh, we're going to be dealing with uh, or have the, the data model used by a lot of really small gardens who don't have uh, very much time or resources to work on a project. So we wanted to make it so that you could only use the pieces uh, that you needed or had time for at your garden. And uh, because uh, the data model we knew could be very complex, uh, we wanted to make sure that we stayed focused on the features that provide the greatest benefit to the majority of gardens, and you'll see that in uh, what we've come out with.